Hey everybody, this is video 5 in a video series focused on the Fed's new Ample Reserve Policy Framework. That's right, since 2008, the Fed has been operating monetary policy under an Ample Reserve Policy Framework. Before 2008, they operated under a Limited Reserve Policy Framework. Under that Limited Reserve Policy Framework, reserves were scarce, they were a need for banks, and the Fed was able to do open market operations, open market purchases, and open market sales to change the supply of reserves to change the federal funds rate. Okay? Okay? That was the situation pre-2008 under the Limited Reserve Policy Framework. But then in 2008, the Fed bought a ton of assets, government bonds, and mortgage-backed securities from the banking sector and credited those banks' reserve balances, okay? Basically increasing the amount of reserves banks had and how, much they, how many reserves they held at the Fed. They credited those reserve balances at the Fed. And so reserves exploded, okay? Bank reserves at the Fed exploded at that time period. We moved from a limited reserve, where banks had a limited amount of reserves they held at the, at the Fed, to an ample amount, enough to cover all their needs, basically, to even an abundant amount and even in a super abundant amount of reserves, okay? When that happened, when reserves were no longer limited, the Fed needed new policy tools to change the federal funds rate. Simply doing open market operations under an ample reserve or abundant or superabundant framework would not change the federal funds rate. And these new policy tools were administered rates. What are the two administered rates? The interest rate on reserve balances and the overnight reverse repurchase agreement rate, which is what this video is all about. Those two administered rates, okay, again, interest rate on reserve balances and the overnight reverse repurchase agreement rates, those two rates was, were what now or are now what the Fed uses to control the federal funds rate. And here's the thing. Keep this in mind, this is big, is the goal of the Fed is to control that federal funds rate or influence that market-driven rate. They don't administer it. They have to kind of influence it, manipulate it, okay, that federal funds rate and other short-term interest rates, other money market interest rates. What they're trying to do is really control all short-term interest rates as much as they can, exert a lot of influence over them, and really they're actually even hoping that they have some impact on long-term rates too to affect the borrowing decisions of businesses and individuals to have an impact on the economy at large. Raise those interest rates to curb borrowing and therefore dampen spending or borrowing by individuals and businesses to dampen spending to cool the economy down or lower interest rates to increase borrowing and increase spending by individuals and businesses. So here's the deal. In 2008, Basically, the Fed started purchasing all of these assets, like I said, from commercial banks and crediting their reserve balances at the Fed, and they really, that federal funds rate went right down to zero. Okay, and they just, and that was their goal too, is bring the federal funds rate down to zero, and they stayed at zero all the way to 2015. The 2015 was the year known as liftoff for the Fed. It's when the Fed, after seven years, decided to try to raise the federal funds rate. And the reason we kind of call it liftoff is this is bringing the federal funds rate up using a new tool. It used to be they'd do an open market sale, right? They'd do an open market sale, reduce the supply of reserves in the banking system, driving up the federal funds rate. No longer, right? I need, they need a new tool to raise the federal funds rate because under an ample reserve framework, changing the supply of reserves isn't going to have an impact on the federal funds rate. Again, see videos one, two, three, and four to really understand that. 2015, liftoff. They've got to raise the federal funds rate. One tool they knew for sure was the interest rate on reserve balances. They're going to raise that up. That would put a floor for the federal funds rate, at least in regards to those institutions that earn interest on reserve balances, i.e. banks. Okay, So certainly, increasing the interest rate on reserve balances is going to help raise the federal funds rate, but here's the deal. There are other non-bank financial institutions who participate in money markets, and even the federal funds rate, some of them participate in the federal funds rate, that are not able to get interest rate on reserve balances. They, the interest rates on reserve balances is not a thing for them, okay, for these non-bank financial interest, uh, institutions. So the Fed needed another administered rate to try to influence those non-bank financial institutions also to exert more control on what they cared about. Again, the federal funds rate and other short-term interest rates. So what was this other tool going to be? 
the overnight reverse repurchase agreement rate. And that's what this video is all about. See, in 2013, they started to experiment with this overnight reverse repurchase agreement rate. And in 2015, they opened up a facility. And that's, again, what this video is about. A standing overnight reverse repurchase facility is what they opened up to have this new alternative. And that's what the overnight reverse repurchase agreement rate is. It's an alternative for these non-bank financial institutions to earn this alternative interest rate to help drive other interest rates in the economy to what the Fed wants the federal funds rate, short-term interest rates, to be. I hope that makes sense. Now, we're going to go into this in a little bit of detail, but I hope that makes sense to you. Now, a couple things on terminology. You might hear like repo market, okay? That repo comes from the word repurchase, okay? So there's like, there's repo and then there's reverse repo, right? You got the repo, okay, the repurchase and the reverse repo. So I'm going to go into this, into some of the mechanics of this, and then I'll get back to the broader implications, all right? So the Fed opens up this facility, but before I even really get into the Fed's facility, I just want to you to understand kind of how this repo reverse repo thing works, okay? I've got entity one, okay, and entity two. It could be bank, non-bank, financial institution, whatever. I, whatever these entities might be, again, banks or some non-bank institution, doesn't matter. One wants to borrow from the other, okay? The one that wants to, to borrow, this is key, the one that wants to borrow is doing the repo, okay? The one that's doing the lending is the reverse repo. So that's right. One thing to understand when we talk about the repo market is there's always a reverse repo happening at the same time. There's two entities engaged, one's doing a repo, the other one is doing a reverse repo. And to keep it straight, just make sure here, the repo, that's the borrowing, right? And the reverse repo, that's the lending, all right? Now, how does this work, okay? Well, pretty simply, what happens the first day, kind of day one, is the one entity borrows funds. So there comes the funds. I'm writing that in green. If you want to think of that as cash, that's perfectly fine. And what this entity does is it places some assets with the other entity. Okay, they place these assets with the other entity. The entity, this entity too, actually gets possession of these assets. What's really kind of interesting here is these assets are actually going to be worth a little bit more, okay, than really even the interest rate overall. And the reason is this is a collateralized way of doing borrowing and lending so that it's really secure, right? To keep these interest rates really low, right? And see ones like literally giving up their assets. It's a collateralized debt. And these assets are actually worth a good amount, more than the loan is even worth, okay? But they've written an agreement, okay? NT2 has to sell these assets back. And so day two comes, right? We've got overnight, remember the overnight aspect. Day two comes, right? And hey, I got to pay you some funds. Now, this payment of funds, sorry, I didn't write funds very well. There we go. This payment of funds is going to be slightly more than this right here. And the difference right there, you take that delta between these two payments, this one's a little bit bigger than this one, and put it over the original amount of the funds that came to entity one, and you have basically the interest rate. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So again, this payment's going to be a little bit more than what this lending was right here. And that's how this entity actually makes money. Now remember, the difference is going to be really small because this is a very secure, collateralized uh, lending borrowing situation. And at this time, Entity 2 has to give back the assets, okay? Repurchase agreement. This is an agreement. It's a contractual agreement. I'm going to give you my assets, but as long as I make payment the next day, you got to give those assets back. And again, those assets were worth a little bit more than the loan. Super secured, keeping those interest rates down. So there you go. That's what a repo looks like. You've got the repo, you've got the reverse repo. Every single situation like this, one entity's doing the repo, one's doing the reverse repo. Now, there's one little twist on all of this, okay? The Fed calls it the standing overnight reverse, rever reverse repurchase facility. The problem is the Fed is not doing the lending, okay? I put the lending on the reverse repo side. So you think, oh, this is the Fed. No, 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 no. The Fed is actually over here, okay? So wait a second. Why is that? Well, guys, all it is is the Fed has actually named this facility from the bank's perspective, okay? From the bank's perspective. 
So the banks, and it's, I shouldn't say banks, sorry about that, for the non-bank, right, the non-bank financial institutions, because really banks can participate in this, by the way, they don't really need to because this rate is lower than the interest rate on reserve balances, so it's non-bank financial institutions. They're over here, so non-bank financial institutions. Okay, so I know, hopefully you're sticking with me on this. Here's the deal. The non-bank financial institutions, yes, they're the ones that are doing the lending. They're the ones earning the overnight repurchase, reverse repurchase agreement rate. They're earning it. They're doing the lending. The Fed is technically doing the borrowing. This is a way for the Fed to pay them an interest rate, a competitive rate. And now, hopefully, that brings it all home. Okay, now we've got it. Now all these non-bank financial institutions, they have this way to earn an interest rate, a guaranteed one, right? They're lending with the Fed. Not only that, that, it's a repo with the Fed. I mean, in every way, the most secure form of lending you could possibly do, I'm lending to the Fed, they're never going to default, and it's a repo on top of that. So, super secured, and this interest rate, therefore, is going to set a floor for these other money market interest rates. And so in 2015, they implement this desk, the overnight reverse repurchase agreement rate along with the interest rate on reserve balances. Actually, they lift them both up and we got lift off. They got what they wanted. The federal funds rate came up and other short term interest rates came up. And hey, guess what? Under this new ample reserve policy framework, they now had proven in 2015 that they could still exert control over short-term interest rates without their old tool, open market operations, that their new tool, two administered rates, interest rate on reserve balances and the overnight reverse repurchase agreement rate, those two rates would exert enough control they could do what they wanted to do and have impacts on interest rates broadly in the economy to implement their monetary policy. Now, if you stuck with all of that, wow. I hope you you feel like you've accomplished something. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in some other video.